It is science lesson for the year eights at the Thomas Deacon Academy in Peterborough. Today, there will be a dad, a nurse, or a mum. I'm the mum. Okay, you're the mum. Through role play, science teacher Nicola Offer wants to enable the students to learn about a sensitive subject, IVF, in a more relaxed way. To engage youngsters in science, they first need to be motivated. Then opportunities for science careers can be shown to them by using role play as a teaching technique. So Nicola has invited a guest into today's lesson, school nurse Rachel Bynes. She will start the lesson with some background information on IVF. OK, IVF, does anybody know what it stands for? In vitro fertilisation. Fantastic. So we have an egg. Using transparent plastic eggs and a marble as a nucleus, Rachel explains the situation of parents called Maya and Jake, who desperately want a baby. But the mum is suffering from an inherited disease called LOM, which makes her blind. She doesn't want to pass this on to her child. This is where IVF can help. We take out this fertilised nucleus from Maya and Jake's egg and put it inside the healthy sac. Yeah? So once you put it inside there, this baby will, in theory, have two mums but one dad. I think they do need the background knowledge in the first place so they can have that foundation to build upon when they're doing their role plays. Um, but I do think it's a good way, you know, especially with the year eights, to be able to get them to explore the different issues. So you're in groups of three, and in that group of three, one of you is going to be the mum, one of you is going to be the dad, and one of you is going to be the nurse. After the students have picked their roles, they meet with the other mums, dads and nurses to prepare for role play. As you'd expect, the mums have lots of questions. Will it make me ill? Will it hurt? Will there be any after effects? What are the chances of it working? Will they get some of their genes passed on to your child? So I actually thought that the, the students would be quite reserved in the way they spoke to each other, but actually they've thought about things that I didn't even think about. Um, and they've really taken on sort of with quite a lot of maturity, which surprised me as well, because, you know, it's quite a sensitive issue. But it's not so easy for everyone. The dads are struggling. Well, I know something you could say to the woman. Um, you could say, um, we're going to get through this. How long is the needle? Yes. Yeah. Nicola tries to push the dads a bit. Read one to me. Um, what are the chances of it working? Okay. Is that like your biggest priority? Um, I think it's will it cause problems for the baby. Hmm. The reason why they have to have this procedure is because the mother has this disease which is causing her to be blind. Yeah. So the biggest concern will be obviously having a healthy baby. Nicola facilitates the mums and dads, while the nurses get professional support from Rachel. They have the hardest job, since they have to have all the information ready. They have to think about all the possible questions and concerns mums and dads could have and be prepared to answer them. Could the baby die? Is it the egg or the nucleus which has the disease? Are the babies allowed to meet the other mum? I was quite surprised in some of the questions that some of the students asked. Ones that I hadn't thought of, but that's the whole way we teach, and they always ask you surprising questions. Um, things about ethics and religion and stuff like that, which I hadn't initially thought of would come into the IVF, and they, they brought them up. And it's not only the ethical and religious aspects that make IVF such a sensitive topic. Sometimes it can even be slightly embarrassing for the pupils to talk about the science involved. How do you get the sperm out? OK. Um, have you ever heard of masturbation? <laughs> nothing to worry about, nothing to be embarrassed about, but that's what they have to do. OK, that's how they get the sperm out. And they have to give the sample and they have to donate the sperm. Why the woman that um, anaesthetic? Okay, don't worry, nothing to worry about. It's a really good question though, because if you hadn't asked it, somebody else would have. So it's a good point to bring up. So you've got quite a little bit of time now to go through your old place, explore the questions that you've prepared in the first task and go away from this meeting that you've got with the nurse feeling like you know everything that you need to know about IVF.
At this stage, Nicola is not too worried about the accuracy of the subject. She can correct any misconceptions in the debrief later. Now it's about the experience of the role play. What are your names? Myra. Oh, Jane. Are you sure you want to go through with this process? Hello. Yes, we're pretty sure, aren't we? Okay. Did it affect the child's health in any way or intelligence? Normally, a child would be born perfectly healthy. Can you give me a quick briefing on how the process works? Well, we'll get an egg from you and like sperm from him, and then we'll like get the stuff out of the egg and put that stuff in like a healthy egg. And... How much does it cost? Well, um, it depends where you live and if you already have a child, and you can get it on the NHS for free, but it could cost between £3,000 to £8,000. So if it goes wrong, will we get refunded? Will it affect my relationship with my spouse? Well, you become like. The students are bringing up a whole list of different issues. Right, a bit upset. What would happen if, like, my husband's sperm was, like, slightly had the problem or something? Um, it might not work, because, like, fertilisation will when you've got an activity like this where they can kind of explore other pathways rather than just looking at what IVF is, which is what the curriculum is, it kind of allows that sort of expression of interest which you wouldn't ordinarily have. Will the baby look like me and my wife? Yeah, it should do because it's got more of your genes than that of the person's. Are you prepared to like have twins? Kind of. Kind of. Because there's an increase of not all births. You could get twins. It's not always easy for the pupils to ask questions, since it is a sensitive topic. But the role play helps to overcome any awkward moments. Yeah, because it yeah. doesn't make it quite as like serious as if you're just sitting down and being told it. I didn't know what IVF was, so that was very interesting to learn about, like what it was and what people like have to go through and stuff when they have the treatment. It was quite good that um, the nurse could actually um, like answer questions. So what sorts of things did people discuss? What were some common questions that people were asking? Yeah. If it would affect the child. OK, in what way? In what the, were your concerns? Um, their brain or their shape of body or something. And they asked if um, anyone had died from it or if they um, could have a disease. We said today that we're going to be looking at, you know, how we can use science in the future and how that science is involved in a situation like a couple using IVF. So what sorts of professional people and jobs do you think people will be involved in a situation like this? You could have a clinical physicist. OK. What else? Yeah. A surgeon. Maybe the person who uses the scan of the ultrasound. Um, psychiatrists. Psychiatrists. How might a psychiatrist be involved in a situation like this? Well, if the baby die, it dies because it doesn't work, um, like, the mother might go crazy or something like that. Might go crazy. OK, so, yeah, they need support to help them in that difficult time. The students come up with a surprisingly long list of professions. Talking about IVF and the role play seems to have opened their eyes to career opportunities. The next task is a poster trail. Each group has to choose one career involved in IVF and find out even more about it on the internet. This group has chosen to look at the career of a surgeon. What do surgeons do? Surgeons operate on people in the theatre. Taking out bits that they don't need. The students are quite surprised about how many professions are involved in IVF. I don't think like science people, laboratory guys, or technicians. And then like mechanics are involved as well for building the machinery, and you wouldn't really think that far into it. You just think, oh, there's doctors and nurses. There's so much pressure on your career and what you want to do, but you'll make up your mind when you, you know, you look and you find that right thing. I didn't know I wanted to be a school nurse until a lot later. I knew I wanted to go into nursing, but not necessarily school nursing, because you don't know what those jobs are about. So when you've got the internet and you can look and you can explore different careers, then you can probably find it a little bit sooner and then shape your way towards it more appropriately. 
George, Nick and Emily are trying to find out more about what a clinical engineer does. So would George be interested in becoming a clinical engineer? Well, I could understand it and um, what the needs for it was and I, I thought it was um, actually quite um, good, useful and um, I think um, I wouldn't really take it up as a career. It's a different story for Chelsea. Together with Tallulah and Matthew, they want to find out more about a laboratory assistant. They work in wards or clinics. Yeah. Clinical support workers may take blood. Chelsea has got good reasons for doing so. I'd like to work in the lab. I think that would be quite an interesting job. Chelsea is an exception. The majority of her classmates don't know what they want to be. They are the ones Nicola wants to address. What quite a lot of schools do is they have a careers day or career fair and everyone goes crazy about careers for the day and then they go back to their lessons. And actually that's not what a career choice is about. You don't flippantly on one day say, oh, oh, I spoke to a nurse today and actually I think I want to be a nurse. That's not what it's about. It's about a consistency and about exploring avenues all the time and sort of saying, oh, well, I've looked into this, no, I've looked into that. Not just looked at a pin board and said, oh, I need a C at this, oh, I've got that, therefore I can tick the box and I can go into that career. I think it needs to be something that infiltrates across their curriculum and their personal choices and their interests. For the poster trail, each group puts up their poster well on the wall. Jed puts up the information about a surgeon. Along with their poster, each group has also prepared some questions about their profession. So Jed, Xavier and Abby now have to answer questions about the careers of a sales representative, a clinical engineer and a laboratory assistant. A laboratory assistant. How much would they earn? £19,000 to £38,000. What subjects do you need a degree in? Mechanical, electronic uh, or electric engineering. Wonderful. Grab a seat. Now they vote for the poster with the best information on it. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, laboratory assistants pipped it by one because they had six votes. Well done to that team. That was awesome. So laboratory assistants, best poster. At the end of the day, Nicola wants to know what the children have enjoyed the most and what they have learnt. We learnt about jobs that were done in the hospital that, like aren't as known as, as other jobs, like clinical engineer. Good, so you sort of like broadened your understanding about the other sorts of jobs that you might find that are linked to this topic of IVF, wonderful. Can someone give me the highlight, the bit that you enjoyed the most? The bit I liked best was when we were like, all the mothers having a little mothers meeting. So you liked it when you got to talk to other people who had the same character as you. <laughs> See you later. Hopefully it will sort of broaden the horizon. They won't just stop at the obvious choices, but actually see that science isn't just this sort of narrow avenue, but actually there are so many things that can be explored and given half the chance um, can kind of use their, their actual personal interest in a more specific area rather than sticking to something which is quite broad. Mm -hmm.